Hi, it's Matt from the future. In this episode, we're gonna install a Cummins generator at the Demo HQ. If you're interested in a generator at any time, there's a link in the description to go check out more info about Cummins and the generators they make for homes and small businesses. Really cool, gonna be awesome for the Demo HQ. Go check it out. All right, enjoy this video, Demolisha. Welcome to Demolition Ranch. Welcome to Off the Ranch. I need to do some stuff though. I need to move this and that porta potty and that porta potty. Don't ask. So this is the Demo Ranch HQ, our headquarters. And you can see right there the edge of the solar panels. This thing is all solar energy right now. We have solar panels on the roof, a big inverter in there and batteries in there. And then we have everything running off solar. There's no grid hooked up to this, no extra power. We have a water tank right there with a pump in it. So we have all rainwater collection and solar power. That's our air conditioner. We have an AC that runs off of just solar power. Problem is, if you're using it a lot and it's a cloudy day like today where you can't see blue skies or you can't see the sun then it's not going to charge very well we actually have never run this thing dry except for one time when i left the lights on and the air conditioner on overnight on a hot day and it drained it all the way down to zero and so times like that or times like this when you're using it a lot and it's cloudy you will run it all the way down, you could possibly. And so a generator, which is what we are going to install right here, will help make that better. So it'll make sure that if you don't have enough sun or you don't have enough battery charge, you still have electricity. So a generator is just a backup. We're only gonna use it for backup. We're gonna use all solar energy and battery power first. And once that's gone, if we need it, we're gonna have a little generator right here on the pad. It's gonna be a propane generator. So we're actually gonna bury a propane tank because I don't know if y'all know, but we do a lot of pew pewing a little over there. And like, I don't, there, we've never accidentally pewed a little freedom seed this way. But like, the worry is like, what if our full propane tank got hit? Boom! So yeah, we're just gonna bury it just to be safe. A lot of people bury them anyway just because it looks nice, which it will look much nicer, not have a big propane tank sitting here. We're also gonna bury it for safety concerns. Probably back here somewhere. I'm not really sure. I'll let the uh, the pros figure that out, but I think I need to move this and this and for sure that so we can get all of our stuff in here. I've never actually like tried to push a porta potty before. Oh, that's, that's not too bad. Where am I gonna go with this thing though? That's the question. Yeah, everything's beautiful now. No, come on. I, Still not ready. I threw another battery charger on a different kind. It's saying the battery's bad, which makes sense because it's just been weird since I've got it with this battery. So maybe it's not a parasitic draw, maybe it's just bad battery. Should be nice, be easy fix. Doesn't look like that old of a battery though. Okay, Chief's not gonna start right now. That's fine. I'll start him later. It's fine. We'll get a new battery. I'll be back. For those who don't know, this is what the inside of the demo ranch. HQ looks like a few things you haven't seen yet. We got a rug. This place is really shaping up. You can hear it's pretty echoey in here. It was even more echoey before the rug. So probably need to get like a pad under it too and then start hanging some stuff on the walls to cut down the echo. It's just a big open room with a lot of metal shelves and stuff like that. Very echoey. There is some electricity coming in from the panels right now, but we're using so much um, with lights and the fridge and trying to charge the truck. It's, I got it plugged into the wall now. So we're actually draining the batteries right now. We're not making enough solar from the roof to power all the stuff we're doing right now, which if we did that for long, we would need a generator. But it's because it looks like this outside. Very hazy and cloudy, very foggy out here on Demo Ranch. It's like 7.45 in the morning right now. Maybe the sun will come up and break through these in a little bit. It probably will. All right, I'm gonna get a battery and I think pretty soon the guys who are gonna install that generator should be here with the generator. And you're gonna like what we got today. It's pretty sweet. If you like this truck, you're gonna like that. If you like five ton, you're gonna like that. If you like Earl, you're gonna like that. Ooh, the trucks have arrived. We got some heavy equipment coming in, boys. 
It's not really that heavy. I mean, it's kind of heavy, not like huge though. And there's the big mamma jamma, our new generator. I'll tell you more about it in a minute, but first thing, they're gonna get it unloaded and then they're gonna use this little mini excavator over here to dig a hole. He said as close to the building as he is allowed to put it, he will, so it's not like too far over there, not getting into this tree root system or anything. I think we're gonna build, put it right here. I'm actually a little bit worried about that tree. Look at this little baby skid steer. I love it. Okay, here's the generator, and what I was telling you guys you would like earlier, if you like Earl, and if you like Abel, and if you like Chief, you will also like this because of that right there. And for those who are like, what are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> right there. And these guys who are installing it today are not with Cummins, but they know what's up. Right there. And right there too. He's marked out where he's gonna start digging. Right there. It's gonna be our tank. Looks like we'll be clear of the tree. Very good. Try to keep all the trees I can out here. And luckily down here, everything's pretty much nice brown dirt, just like that. Uh, we're at the bottom of the property where all the dirt kind of has flowed throughout rains and everything for hundreds of years, I'm sure, thousands of years. At the top of the property, the mansion is, it's all rocky up there. I don't know if this little excavator could do it. It probably could. We uh, dug a big hole for the bunker, but we used a much bigger backhoe to do that. It's happening. Look how, look how narrow that is. I was just talking about this little thing, this little bitty, tiny skid loader. Look at that little bucket on it. That's the cutest little thing I've ever seen. So he said this is really nice because he can get it into backyards. He can get this thing and that mini excavator into backyards, put people's tanks in there really easily because it is so narrow. I mean, it is half the width of my big skid steer. This is so cool. So I mentioned in Off the Ranch video that I was interested in getting a generator and I didn't know anything about them. I was really just kind of fishing for information. Cummins, someone from Cummins, saw that video and I think everybody knows I'm a pretty big Cummins fan because I talk about, I rant and rave about Earl, end of world Earl, my 2012 fourth gen truck. And then I got my 8.3 liter Cummins in the five ton. And then more recently I got the old 5.9 first gen. And so I love Cummins, even though it's, it's broken right now, but it's a battery, it's not, not Cummins fault. Uh, I love them and I think they realized that. And so they reached out to me and said, hey, we make generators too. And I did not know that. So they make diesel generators, they make propane generators, and they make natural gas generators. They make those for residential and small businesses. I will say, this generator was given to me by Cummins. Uh, I wasn't paid, so everything I'm saying, don't think that I'm saying it because I was paid. Um, I'm just gonna tell you what I know, and I did get this generator given to me. And I'm having to put some money toward the install, but the generator itself was a gift on the channel. I wanna be forthcoming with that. and. I'll tell you if it breaks, because I don't have to say anything nice. Well, speaking of nice, our front porch is shaping up too. We found that side of the road, no big deal. It's, it's a recliner. <laughs> so we can just chill out here on the porch and have a good old time. I just want one of these things. I think I need to buy a little skid steer. I think that one's too small for most of the stuff that I would want to do, and I don't have to worry about getting into backyards back here, because we have a lot of space. I think I need a big powerful one. I have that one, you've seen it, it's my dad's though. And it's an old one and it can't do a whole lot. And I see Whistling Diesel with his brand new one, just like carrying Jeeps around everywhere. <sighs> They're just so expensive. So if you know anything about skid loaders, like what brand is the best, let me know. Uh, Whistling Diesel's got a John Deere. My dad's is a Bobcat. There's a Kubota dealership in town. I don't know anything about them. I don't know what's better, what's worse, what to stay away from. Let me know, Demolisha. I need your help. It's currently about four feet deep over there. He's got to get a lot deeper. The propane tank's not here yet, but I think it's arriving shortly. <laughs> he let me drive it. <laughs> this is so cool. All right, right here. Uh, let's go right there. Go right there. Sweet. It's so cute. I love it. <laughs> this is going really well. I'm making a big pile over there so he can keep digging over there, keeping that pile small. Also, big boy just arrived. So they brought that in case we hit rocks, but I don't think we're hitting any rocks over here. Nothing big. Four foot six. How deep you need it? Five eight. Five eight, about a foot left. He's hitting some rock down there now, not much. Which is pretty good. We live in the hill country in Texas and it's very rocky here. So to get four feet deep for hitting any rocks, Pretty dang good. Maybe I should just skip the uh, skid loader and just get one of these. Like, you could do some work with that. Look at that thing. If I had an excavator with a hammer on the end of it, I would just be crushing things off. I would just, everything. 
I would get old cars. I would just crush through everything. It'd be so good. Look at this thing. Oh, it's awesome. I feel like I'm a little kid playing with my like my dump truck toys right now. Like, look how cool this is. I'm back up, so I don't get hit with any rock chips. All right, so he's just going down to that rock bed now and he's gonna bust it all up, and then he gets that mini excavator in here and pulls up all the crumbs. There we go. I don't know how loud it's gonna be. Oh, it's not bad. Look at that, just sinking right in that rock. Love it. <laughs> I'm just over here behind the camera, just smiling. Like, this is so cool. Just watching this giant machine just break some rocks. I don't know why. I don't know if you guys think this stuff's cool, but that's just amazing to me. Because that's something you cannot do with a shovel and a pickaxe. This machine just comes and does it in one second. There's your problem right there. Now we just gotta scoot those rocks out of the hole. Look at that. We're doing an epic unboxing right here. Let's do it. See what she looks like. Oh, uh, uh, one hand, very hard. Oh yeah. There we go. That's the best part right there that it says coming, so cool. So this is their 17 kilowatt generator right here, propane. And we have blue skies showing now, which means we are charging our batteries. Those will be at 100 in no time now. Check out this video of my hole. flattened out. It is about five feet deep. We're getting our pad cleaned off so we can set the generator in place. Check it out. We got the Cummins generator all opened up here. This is our motor right here. That's the generator back there. So actually just kind of looking at this, I've never really ever looked at a propane motor, but it's kind of cool. So this is a two cylinder. There's a head here and a head here. You can kind of see some of the cooling fins on the head down there on one of them. And so this is where the air comes in. This is our air box, our intake. Maybe a little throttle body, mass airflow sensor kind of thing there. And then it splits right here on these intakes. So this goes this way and this way on this manifold, straight into our heads there. So that's the intake side. And the exhaust side is on the other side. So you can see that's an exhaust pipe coming out there. And it merges with this exhaust pipe right there. And then goes out and there's a muffler. And this system's apparently really quiet. We obviously don't have it hooked up to anything yet, so I have not heard it run, but it's apparently quiet, and that's both due to the engine, but also how the engine is in this box. So this thing closes up, but there's a box inside the box as well. So this is, has a big vent here, that there. Air comes in through here. This is an oil cooler here, so air can pass into that oil cooler. This, I think, is where the air gets into this box. So it goes and it drops down here, comes up in here, and then I think it sucks on the in underside of this. Not really sure, also some vents here. But there's no direct path for noise to come straight out without hitting one of these walls here, which is what helps keep it extra quiet. This is our computer board over here. It actually has a little like Cat5 looking hookup, so you can hook it up and I think you can control it all remotely if you have internet if you have a, a Wi-Fi. Here's our little screen we can do the readout on where you can figure out what all it's doing, all that good stuff. And then a battery tray where you put a little 12 volt battery right there. This has an automatic starter, obviously. So I have a battery whenever it needs to kick on, the starter turns it on and it starts generating electricity, pumping it into our house. This is all sand they brought in, same with that. This is one load, this is the second load. That sand goes in the bottom to level everything and then it goes around our propane tank. It's gonna have a big propane tank buried right there. So that sand just goes all around it, keep it perfectly where you want it. And I think they also put something around it to keep it from getting rusty and that kind of thing over time. He was telling me this trailer has a scissor lift. It's a dump trailer like mine, it has a scissor lift. Mine has a big post lift at the front, so mine is really good for heavy loads. He says the scissor lift struggles a little bit to dump heavy loads, which that's a pretty heavy load on that trailer right there. Nothing. <laughs> Trying to make it go up, but it won't go. We're gonna use this thing to help it out. Now it'll move a little bit. Oh, it's so slow though. 
So the scissor lift it has a cylinder in the middle. I'll show you in a minute. Mine has a cylinder at the front, which has a lot more leverage. Should have got that Texas Pride trailer. That's what it's all about. Whoa. Also, you might be hearing something in the distance. Could be anything, I don't know what it is. So that is the scissor lift right there. Mine has a big three-stage cylinder right here, so it picks up from that end. So I have leverage on my side, but this one does not. Now that he got a lot of the weight up, it's able to do it by itself. And it'll dump the rest of the way. Okay, we'll be back out here tomorrow to finish this. The propane tank will be delivered tomorrow, and it will start hooking everything up. I'm gonna go see who's out on the range, because I might need to go and get some trespassers. All right, crisis averted. I heard some shots, but it's just the Reaper. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Oh, dude, the sun coming behind you is like making you look like an angel right now. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Looks great. What's up, man? You just uh, doing some fun stuff out here? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, rocking away at a little pistol work. I'll leave you to it. I just I just wanted to come say hey. No worries, brother. I appreciate All you right. stopping by. Keep doing I'm what you do. I knocked. I knocked. Dude, you look majestic right now. But have you seen how thick you are? I forgot to tell you when I was walking. Oh, yeah? You noticed? Dude, you got thick. Thanks, bro. bro. Thanks. I'm trying. I'm trying to look hey. like you. Dude, no, I don't know. <laughs> All right, Nick Irving. See you later. Appreciate it. God, guy. He's so nice. Just wanted to show you guys. We are sitting at 100%. It hit it by about like 12.30, even though it was cloudy this morning. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Day two, we have an electrician here working now. things. One, I need a crane on the back of a truck. That was super cool. Never really seen one like that. Uh, that was awesome. I can use that for a million things. I need it. I didn't say I want one. I said I need one. Uh, the second thing, uh, tanks in the ground and that little white bag they were putting dirt on, that's called the anode bag. And that thing hooks to the tank with a wire and it does something to keep it from rusting. It's something like if, if you just put that tank in the ground, even with a nice coat of paint, it will still rust because every time it rains, it's gonna be sitting in wet soil. But something with that anode bag, like takes the charge away and so the water does not rust the metal. I don't know how it works, but it was really interesting. He was explaining it to me and I was like, I love it. I, I don't know what you're saying, but like, I don't know, it was really cool. I didn't know that. Propane tanks that are buried apparently need to have a connection to an anode bag to do something with electricity and uh, electrolysis and rust prevention. So the PVC pipe you saw in Ben is right there and that just basically shields our gas pipe. So it has this flexible tubing here that goes through that pipe all the way in this ditch, makes the turn, comes up and comes out right here. And I was pretty impressed with <laughs> how easily you can bend a pipe. He just got all hot and then it was just like a floppy noodle and he made that thing exactly how he wanted it. So that'll come out there, it'll connect into there. You can see the electrician finished everything up here already. Power goes straight in there. And then it comes in through this pipe up to our inverter which is obviously not all wired yet. The electrician is not done. Done on the outside, not done on the inside yet. Also just realized that I had forgotten that you guys aren't gonna see this video for a couple months. Um, right now it's December, mid-December. We're like a week out from Christmas. So that's why uh, my first gen Dodge looks like it does and not like I assume it'll look in two months. That's why this room probably looks different than it will in two months. That's why everything is different right now. I, I just totally forgot that I was filming this video but you guys aren't gonna see it like tomorrow because we have to hold it because that's what works best for Cummins. But the benefit there is it's not like we're gonna put this in and be like, I, it'll probably be cool guys because by the end of this video, I will have had it for a couple months and be able to tell you exactly everything about it, which is pretty neat. All right, we're gonna finish installing it and, and then I guess you guys will get fast forwarded a couple months in one episode, which will probably be a first for Off The Ranch. We're gonna do a little work, fill in the hole That'll just help get it nice and solid in there. We're not going to fill it all the way up right now. Just getting it to where it won't be moving around. Get it settled. And then we'll finish connecting it all together. Check it out. It's the electrician's truck. 
not a Dodge, but still a Cummins. <laughs> Electrician has everything hooked up in here, closed up. We're done on the inside. Tank is about half buried. They got all this on there. This is a box, so that will hinge open so we can get to it, check the levels of the propane tank and everything, and the propane tank is full. It was filled just a second ago. And this thing's about 99% done over here. The only thing left to do is a little bit of programming on both the generator and the inverter, basically telling this when to turn on, telling the generator when to turn on, that kind of thing. We want it to know like when we get down to this level of battery, we want the generator to kick on. We want it to know like every once in a while, we want you to turn on and cycle and make sure that, you know, you're like, basically what it does is it checks itself. It makes sure the starter runs because it has a little starter on it. It makes sure that it's cycling every once in a while to charge up the battery, to keep everything, all the fluids moving around, all the oil and everything lubed up. So we're just, just programming right now. Just computer stuff. It's pretty cool. I have no idea what we're doing. And check this out. So we were at 100% because it's been sunny today, but now it is late in the day and the sun is going down. So we are not getting a whole lot of solar energy right now. And the lights and the fridge and everything is pulling more right here than we are making from the sun. So it's having to drain the battery a little bit to power all of our lights and everything. But when we kick the generator on, we will be making electricity again and then the batteries won't be draining. So we're gonna kick that generator on, we're gonna flip a breaker, and then we should start putting electricity back into our batteries in a minute once the generator kicks on. She is running. So cool. Intake there, exhaust out here. We just did it, but I wasn't filming. Uh, we did a hard shut, we did this battery disconnect, so that makes it like the batteries are dead. We did, it just cuts them. So we did battery disconnect, all the power went out, and then this thing kicks back on because the generator, it just switched over to generator power. It was running fine. So now I'm gonna do a different test. I just turned on the heater in this building and we're gonna drain this battery. So just the battery power is gonna be running tonight. And we're gonna come back tomorrow when the battery should be very low. And you can see right now, the heater over there is kicking on. So we are using a lot of energy you can see we're back up to 99% because we ran that generator and we're, we were messing with it. Ran that generator, got up to 100. And now I'm gonna drain the battery all the way down overnight. We'll come back tomorrow morning and play with it with no battery power. Hey, Demolisha, 9.30 at night. Came back over to check it out. System's totally dead. I actually just turned it off because it was alarming. Uh, the system's not totally, totally dead. The batteries are drained. So everything was off. All the lights were off that I left on. Uh, so we're gonna come back out here tomorrow morning, start up that generator before the sun comes out and shines on our solar panels. It's the next morning. Let's see if we can get this system up and running again. Okay, so last night when I was up here, it said 0%, but when we turned it on today, it says 25%. So I think it just said zero because it once it gets to 25%, it cuts so you can't use it anymore because they don't want to drain the batteries all the way to zero because it's bad for them. So we just turn it back on. Um, it's at 24%, but it's draining because we got the lights on and everything and there is some sunlight coming in, but we're using more power than what the sunlight's doing. So the generator just kicked on, it takes a second, and then it should start flowing power from this grid to charge our batteries. So it just called for the generator, and we are pulling tons of power from the generator now. So that's what our solar is generating, because it is early in the morning and we don't have direct sunlight yet. That is what our generator is making. And so we're using this much, I turned on everything here. So I got the heater on, the fridge on, the lights are all on. So we're using that much to power all of our stuff here and we still have this much left over to go back to the battery. So now we're doing 4.5, it's still going up on that generator. Dang, we are cranking electricity into those batteries. Super cool. This thing's been going for five minutes and this thing is ramping up. Now we're at 7.22 and climbing, it just keeps getting higher. We're already at 31%, so we've gone up, well we're at 24, so we've gone up 7% in like five minutes. This thing is a 17K unit, so we should, it should keep going up, but batteries are cold this morning, and it kind of has to start up slow, is what he was just telling me. So, 7.3, we are cranking, and still using, I mean we got everything turned on in this building, just because we want to put a huge load on it, so. Using that much energy right now, so, but we're still putting 5K into the batteries. We're at 32, look at that. Oh hey, welcome to the future. My name is Future Matt. 
you guys just came from the past. A lot of stuff's different in the future. For one, it snows in Texas now. You can't see through those blinds, bro. Like a lot. Like a lot, a lot of snow in Texas. The future's insane, guys. Y'all are gonna love it. Uh, the system has been working really good, especially on days like today. When our solar panels are covered in snow, so they are not working efficiently at all. You know what doesn't care about the sun and snow whatsoever? Cummins generators. Everything in here is currently being powered by the generator and the generator is also charging our batteries. I will say I'm a huge fan of solar and I'm a huge fan of having a generator. God, it's bright out here. The snow out here, it's crazy. There's pros and cons to both. For one, once you get everything set up with solar, it's free. The problem is you can't always count on solar. Usually it's fine and nine times out of 10, we are totally good with solar power. But in the last few days, it's been cloudy a ton and there's been snow on this roof, which I could go up and I could clean that off. But you know what a Texan doesn't want to do is climb up on a roof that's covered in snow. That's not really our forte. So the best of both worlds is having both worlds. We have solar for the normal days where it is blue skies and direct sunlight charging up our batteries. And then we have a generator for those times it is not. That's where I think the generators are so handy. They are there when you need them. These Cummins generators, they're engineered, they're designed, and they're manufactured in Minnesota. And then licensed Cummins dealers will come out and install them. So those guys who are all driving Cummins trucks, they are not employed by only Cummins. They are just licensed through Cummins to install their products. They also can install other companies' products as well. So the fact that all those guys were driving Cummins trucks, I think should say something. And this Cummins generator is made by the same company that makes those truck engines, just a different division. This is their home and small business generator group. Link down in the description below, go check them out. I think it's gonna be super awesome having that here at the Demo HQ, which is our total off-grid little building over here with solar, batteries, and now a backup generator. We're not relying on any power company to give us power. We have all the power we need right here. Texas is not used to having this much draw, so everyone has their heaters cranked all the way up because they got down to like five degrees. So they've been doing rolling power outages, which means you have power for like 30 minutes and then they turn it off. They're giving you enough, you can kind of get your heat in your house going a little bit, you can have a little bit of power, and then they turn it off because everyone is trying to turn all their heaters on and suck all the power down. So we've been losing power a lot at my house. Where we have not been losing power is here at the Demo HQ because we have solar on the roof and we've got a generator in the back. The question is, how will it work in the cold? It is currently in the 20s right now. You can see we have this beautiful snow falling down and the ranch is just covered in snow. Looks like we're in Colorado here. So I just actually turned on all the stuff in the house to suck the power down. The batteries actually weren't very highly charged because it's been like this for like a week now. It's been snowing in Texas off and on for like a week, so we haven't been getting a lot of charge. The batteries were at 44%, which is not a big deal for me because I don't live in this building. But if I did live in this building, or if I was using it all day long, 44% would not last very long if you weren't getting more sun. So that's why it's good to have a backup generator. So I'm gonna run the batteries down until this thing kicks on and we'll see how it works. The generator is on now, as you can see. So let's go see how we're charging. God, snow. Okay, generator is working, pumping power into our system. So the solar panels right now with all the clouds above us and it's early morning are making 0.02 kilowatts of energy. The generator which just kicked on is making 4.83 and climbing kilowatts. Okay, been a couple hours. The generator is off and you can see there's nothing coming in from the generator now. The solar is still making a little bit and our lights and refrigerator and things are drawing some, so we're down to 99%. The generator, when called upon, kicks on, fills our batteries back up on a day like today when the weather is not conducive to collecting solar energy. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks so much to Cummins for sponsoring this generator. We really appreciate it. It's gonna make days like today much more enjoyable when we have power at the Demo HQ. Thank you so much for you guys watching this episode of Off The Ranch. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Oh. Hey, what camera is that? Number. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare.